Hello and welcome to a Minecraft video. I'm Scudoboyo playing vanilla Minecraft snapshot 15w47c of the upcoming release of 1.9 PC edition and I swear this is my last video on stone generators. I, I know they're not very interesting, they're kind of low technology, but I'm making this video for two reasons. Um, the first is I just really love boiling a technology down to its absolute essence, making it as simple and practical as possible. Uh, and two, when I first was interested in making a stone generator a long time ago, I had a hard time finding uh, videos that really were very practical in terms of their builds. Uh, there were a lot of huge stone generators and stuff, um, uh, but uh, really I just wanted something that was easy to build. So uh, that was kind of the focus of me whittling down this design over and over again, and, and I finally came up with uh, something I'm happy with. Uh, let me just go into uh, creative mode here for a second. Um, so it is pretty fast. Um, this is just with a, a regular uh, silk touch pit, a pick, uh, no efficiency on it. Uh, now this is capable of um, handling uh, much higher efficiency picks. Um, so this pick here is a efficiency five. Uh, and uh, I'll even give myself uh, haste. Uh, and so um, this actually can handle the uh, speed of mining here with an efficiency 5 pickaxe uh, with a haste beacon. Not a haste 2 beacon though. A haste 2 beacon uh, means uh, insta mining stone and uh, this is just not going to keep up. So, um, uh, But it will. it is pretty fast. So uh, let's go ahead and, and uh, build this thing here. Uh, so the materials that are necessary to build it are pretty minimal. Um, I, I'm going to have a stack or less of slabs here, and um, uh, the reason why I'm using slabs is not because I'm trying to conserve material, uh, but because uh, the design calls for a few slabs, and if it, uh, and using all slabs just minimizes the number of different block types that I have to do in building it, and so it makes things just generally more simple. So uh, I've got a, a few signs, a few torches, a couple of hoppers that I'm going to stack on top of each other, and a collection chest. I've got a few redstone bits, uh, including five regular pistons and a sticky piston. I also need an infinite water source and four lava source buckets. Um, I, I'm going to be powering this thing on and off with a lever, uh, but uh, I'll show a little bit fancier way to use a pressure plate and a couple more uh, extra redstone bits. Uh, and then later on, I'll add the overflow shutoff feature with a couple of comparators, but um, uh, this stuff here is, is really optional. So uh, let's go ahead and build this. Uh, first, pick the spot where you want the stone to come down. Um, I'm going to pick here uh, and uh, go up um, six slabs, so three full blocks. And then at the top, uh, I want two top half slabs coming off in each direction. And then just go ahead and fill in the corners. So I have a gap of two and a half blocks here. You note that there are five half slabs, and the platform on top looks like this. Go ahead and add in a regular piston facing inwards at the t uh, at the t each tip of the platform up here. And now I'm going to be mining stone from this direction, so just go ahead and tear down all of the slabs that are uh, in line here. Go ahead and get the signs. I'm going to put uh, signs here and here, leaving the middle open. And then I'm going to add a sign on the back of each piston. Uh, this is um, uh, signs here, just an immovable block. And now I want a top half slab uh, against each uh, against either side of each piston. And so I will end up with something that looks like that. All right, uh, get the torches. Uh, choose two opposing sides uh, of the top up here and put the torches down on either side of those opposing pistons. And I'm going to use the torches uh, just as a way to place top half slabs above each corner of this um, of this little enclosed area here. So I want uh, floating top half slabs, two over here and two over here. Go ahead and reclaim the torches. And then place those torches on top of these floating top half slabs just like that. Now I need to go ahead and put in the repeaters. So the uh, I'm going to go around, I'm going to be making a repeater loop. Uh, the repeater that points towards the piston is a one tick repeater and the repeater that points towards the corner is a two tick repeater. 
So one tick and two ticks, and I'm just going to follow that pattern all the way around. One tick, two ticks, one tick, two ticks, one tick, and two ticks. Now I need a full uh, full block um, uh, at the at these corners here uh, that the that the repeat that's going to carry the repeater signals, uh, and I can place a slab against the side of this uh, repeater if I'm holding the sneak control. And uh, so you, you can just uh, place a uh, place a full block like this. Uh, I'm instead going to place a, a slab down here first. Uh, just pile three slabs on top of each other uh, just because it's a little bit easier. And now I need a full block, so two slabs on top of each piston. And finally up here, I need a kind of a floating plus shape of top half slabs. Uh, so I'm going to use the same trick, placing a top half slab against the piston. And then I'm just going to use that first one to make my plus shape here. Okay, so you can see I've got that floating plus shape. Uh, and I need to add redstone. Uh, covering that plus shape and then down on the block in between the repeaters on each side. Okay, head back down and uh, directly in the center place a downward facing piston against that uh, against the middle block, uh, the middle slab of that uh, plus shape up there. And you'll notice that the piston is actually separated from the plus shape by a half block. Um, it doesn't really matter. Um, the redstone signal is actually going to activate that piston by quasi-connectivity, so um, uh, you don't really have to worry about it. So it will be activated. Um, you can always throw a, another slab in there if you really, really want, but it's not necessary. Okay, so back down here. Uh, now my signs in the middle are on this side, so I'm going to put my chest on the other side. Um, it's not uh, not strictly necessary uh, to have them on opposing sides, but it just makes it a little bit easier to target the chest when you're up in the mining area. So I need one hopper going into the side of the chest and another hopper going down into that hopper, and these hoppers are directly under that middle piston. Okay, now I need to go ahead and add in some water. Uh, and I need to add water on all four corners of this enclosed area. So here, 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 and over here. Uh, and I can kind of scoot up here, I can, and you can stand on something down here and add that water. Um, I can also reach it from the top up here. Um, so there's one of the corners down there. I can see in between the gap. Uh, but I can also target the underside uh, of uh, of these uh, slabs here with the torches on top. So now I can see those down here. There it is. There's one and two. And now this here is a is a, a water source block. So you can use this as an infinite water source to grab water and add uh, water to the other two corners over here and here. Uh, and now I need to add in lava. And the lava has to go on each side of this piston up here in the middle. Now you can actually target that piston from down here. Um, it, it's a, it's kind of hard to see through the water, um, but it is possible. Uh, still, unless you're absolutely certain, just come up here and add it. Uh, just be mindful of the hitbox of the torch here. So add uh, lava on each side of that piston. So all four source blocks are up here. Okay, and uh, now we can come back down and let's uh, add the on-off switch. Uh, over on this corner here where my chest is, I'm going to come down two blocks and then over to the side, I'm going to come out a block and down another block and now I can go ahead and get rid of these. Uh, they were just temporary. So I have a floating full block here that's uh, off to the side separated by a half block gap. Uh, on the side uh, um, uh, facing in line with my chest here, I'm going to go ahead and put my lever and I'm going to go ahead and activate that so this block is powered. So now uh, when I add a redstone torch on the other side of the lever, uh, it's, uh, it's depowered. Go ahead and place a, uh, two slabs, a full block, on top of that redstone torch. And my piston is going to go on top of that, um, top of that block. And I need it facing inward to this corner block here. So it looks something like that. 
Uh, and this is going to shut off my repeater loop up here uh, when, when the machine is running. So this is basically what's going to turn off my machine. So uh, the piston attaches to this corner block, and when the machine turns on, and when I flip the lever to shut off the machine, this block gets pulled away, and it breaks the, repeat, the circuit of the repeater loop. Now to start the circuit, I'm going to use this same piston and block here. So I've got a redstone torch uh, on top of here. Now this redstone torch and this redstone torch are going to get powered at the same time. That means this block is going to be powered at the same time this piston is activated, pushing this block out of the way. Uh, so uh, there's going to be a one tick signal that makes it through this block before the piston pushes it out of the way. Uh, and I'm going to catch that one, one tick signal uh, right over here. So this dot of redstone is, is going to pick up that signal, and I'm just going to carry it up into the circuit of my clock. Uh, and so that one tick signal will go back into this repeater, and by the time the signal makes it through this repeater, the piston will have pushed the block in place in the corner, and the circuit will uh, be allowed to complete. So let's go ahead and see that in action. There we go. Uh, we've already got uh, stone down here. Uh, so let's go ahead and turn that off for a second. Uh, now I, I like to build a, a little platform down here uh, for mining. Uh, I want to be standing on top of a block here so I'm not looking up into the machine while I'm mining. Uh, and I'm going to just uh, surround, this, um, uh, surround this platform with half slabs. Uh, that kind of locks me in position because there's a piston only two blocks above, uh, above this uh, where I'm standing here. And I'm just going to add a little step and a couple blocks off to the side just to nice it out a little bit. Uh, and that's it. Um, and that's the, that's the full thing. Um, it, uh, it, it works pretty well. It's quite fast uh, as long as it's on. Um, now, if uh, you forget to turn it on and off like I do, um, then you can go ahead and use this, uh, this pressure plate. As long as you've got a couple more bits of, uh, bits of redstone and uh, another redstone torch, uh, so let's turn this off. Uh, now we want to have a pressure plate at the point we're going to stand where we mine. And then a line of two redstone just coming into a full block with a redstone torch on top. And now we can get rid of the lever. Now it's uh, automatic as per the pressure plate. Step on here, the machine is on. And uh, once we step off, the machine is off. So uh, if I break this block, nothing is going to come down because I'm not on the pressure plate. Now, if I want to be really fancy, I can use my comparators to add a, a, an overflow off switch. Uh, so uh, the uh, first dot of redstone here, uh, that's uh, taking signal off of the block uh, with the pressure plate on top of it. I'm going to replace that with a comparator. And I'm going to have another comparator coming out of this chest pointing into the side of the first comparator here. There we go. And uh, the first comparator are going to put on subtract mode. So that way, when the chest is full, the strength of um, being output from this comparator is 15, and that will cancel out the strength of 15 from the pressure plate, effectively turning off the device uh, when the chest becomes full. And uh, go ahead and put my um, stone slab back in there, and, uh, and that's it. Uh, this is the complete build. Uh, we've got exactly what we have over there. Uh, now, I have had a couple of questions as to whether or not the lava in this machine is eventually going to destroy the water, so I wanted to say something quick about that. Now what's going to happen here when a block gets mined above this hopper here uh, is that the next time this middle piston facing down receives a, a redstone pulse, uh, it's going to have an opportunity to push its uh, stone block down next to the hopper, uh, leaving a gap here. Uh, and that means that the next uh, piston on the side here that's uh, receiving uh, signals as, this, uh, as the redstone clock uh, carries its signal around, uh, the next piston on the side to receive a signal is going to be able to push its, block, uh, its stone block into the center. And that's going to leave a gap in front of the piston. Uh, so let me go ahead and tear this down here, uh, get a better look. Uh, okay, so uh, once that block in front of the piston is gone, then one of two things is going to happen. Uh, either water is going to flow into the space or lava is going to flow into the space. Uh, most of the time, uh, it's going to be water, and, and that's just because water flows much faster than lava in the overworld, and as a consequence, um, most of the time, water is going to beat lava into the space. Uh, now, uh, if... Um, the lava flows downward before the signal makes it around the clock to the opposing, uh, to the opposing piston, uh, then this water is going to be turned to stone. doesn't matter if this water is flowing or a water source block. It'll be flowing for just a moment before it gets converted into a water source block. Uh, but it doesn't matter if it's uh, flowing water or water source block. 
when this lava, lava flows downward, um, it's uh, it's going to uh, convert this um, uh, that water source uh, that water block to stone, uh, and then the piston will be locked up, waiting for the next block to be mined. Now, uh, on rare occasions, the lava can actually flow into the space um, uh, uh, before the water can. And in that case, um, there's a risk that water is going to flow to the sides and destroy these water source blocks. Uh, now, this clock up here is pretty fast, and the signal is going to make it around to the opposing piston uh, before this lava gets a chance to flow into the water source uh, water source blocks. And that's just because the clock is faster than the lava can flow uh, can flow two blocks. So um, the piston over here is, uh, since there's not a stone block here, the piston over here is going to push the stone from the middle back into this space, uh, destroying that, la that flowing lava source block, or sorry, destroying that flowing lava uh, before it can actually destroy the water. Uh, now, there is a risk uh, that this lava, uh, this lava uh, source block flows down uh, and the machine gets turned off at the same time. Uh, if that happens, then the signal of this repeater loop is not going to make it all the way over to the piston on the opposing side, uh, which is not going to push uh, the stone from the middle back in front of this piston, which means that um, uh, there, this lava is then going to flow into these water source blocks and destroy them. Uh, now, I, I have been trying to cause that on purpose uh, by, you know, mining a block and quick stepping off or um, quick stepping off and then mining a block. Um, and, and I just have not been able to do it, not, not even on purpose. Uh, so either I don't fully understand the mechanics at play here, <laughs> which is entirely possible, uh, or this is just something that is exceedingly hard to do uh, even on purpose. And so you probably don't even actually have to worry about it. Uh, but if you still worry about it, um, w the thing that you can do is after you've mined a little bit, um, wait for wait until you hear the pistons lock up. Uh, it, uh, when the pistons all stop making sound, basically, and in that case, uh, you know that the inside of the machine has been locked up with stone and it's safe to, to step off, and there's no possibility for the water source blocks to be destroyed by flowing lava. Uh, and um, even if they do get destroyed, that was partly the, the reason for the choice of the slabs here, uh, because all of the water source blocks are visible, and so if anything did actually happen to them, it would be pretty easy to, uh, to see that, uh, and um, it's even relatively easy to fix from down here. So a uh, little bit of an advantage uh, for using slabs there as well. Uh, that's it then for this video. Uh, again, this is, I promise, this is my last video on stone generators. Uh, if you have any questions or suggestions, please leave a note in the comments, and thanks for watching.